Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a full stack application using Python Django in our backend and React.js in our frontend. This is not the first video in this tutorial series, in fact it will be one of the last. In previous videos we've already focused on the setup of Python Django and React.js. We've created page navigation and a navigation menu and we built in CRUD functionality including a form validation and also adding a foreign key field. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different. When we created the setup for our React.js frontend, I used a package called Create React App because that was something that I always used in the past. However, a few of you in the comments pointed out that the best way to create your React app right now is by using a package called Vite. And if you go to the React.js documentation, you will see a similar thing. Uh, when you go to the category of adding React to an existing project, it defines that uh, Vite is the best choice for compiling JavaScript modules, especially due to the many integrations with backend frameworks such as Django. Um, and in this documentation, Create React App is no longer uh, mentioned. So that's also one of the reasons that I'm choosing to move from Create React App to Vite. To realize this migration, we're going to be following six steps. I'm going to start on the documentation uh, of Vite and show you why this is the best choice for us right now. Next, we're gonna go to our current frontend and I'm going to rename the way that our frontend app is right now. Um, following that, we're going to create a Vite app using the commands in the documentation and make a small change in the configuration. And then we're going to copy all of the files that we had in our old application to our new React application. We're also going to close off with installing the required packages and then test to make sure that everything works the way that we expect. And of course, during this video, I will also explain the differences between Create React App and Vite. So let's start with a brief overview of what Vite actually is. You can see on the documentation that Vite considers itself the next generation of front end tooling and it claims that it has a development environment that can finally catch up with you and um, if you want to know why Vite is the best choice for you they've of course written quite a big statement here as well in a nutshell Vite does a very similar thing uh, as to create react app it makes sure that with a few commands you're able to uh, get a complete react app working without doing all of those tasks yourself and it is also very good in bundling all of those different JavaScript files we create in our front end and making sure that our code is compiled and built up correctly. Now, why Vite instead of these other ones? Well, Vite's main unique point is that it's incredibly fast and it addresses the problem of slow server starts um, and long loading times due to a lot of different JavaScript files. And they figured out a way to make this process very, very fast. Um, and we're going to see that by using it in our application. Now on the Vite side, we can also see on the Getting Started page, what are the different things that we can do. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that Vite is not only used for React, it's also used for vanilla JavaScript, Vue, Preact, Lit, Svelte, Solid, and Quick. And you have presets for build for both JavaScript and TypeScript. So even if you want to use different front-end frameworks, you can still use Vite to set up your project, which is uh, quite nice. And a little bit further down, it also specifies how you can get started. But before we do that, we're going to make a small change to our current code. And I'm going to rename our front-end folder to front-end2, because when we are going to create our new React app with uh, Vite, I want to use the front-end name, and we cannot have two folders with the same name. And to do that, I'm going to close off my code, and I'm gonna to go to my actual folder structure, and in there, I'm going to rename it to frontend2. And the reason that I do it this way is that it's just much faster. And now I can open my project again with Visual Studio Code. And the renaming should be complete. And I'm just going to close all of these files because the file path has changed now and it will not understand that. But in terms of project, it's all the same and we should still be able to run our server as well. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our Vite app inside of our project. 
And just to be sure, we are going to use the command npm ivit to install the package before we're actually going to use it. And just like that, vite is installed. And it's nice that we did that, but I'm pretty sure if you just use the commands from the side of feed that it's also going to ask you to install it. So not necessarily required, but I like to do it anyway. And then to create our application, we can use npm create vit at latest. So I'm going to copy over this command, go to our terminal where we are in the highest level of our project. And I'm going to paste in npm create vit at latest. And after this command is going to ask me a few questions. So first it states that we indeed need to install some additional packages and I'm fine with that. So I'm going to type in a Y and press enter. So it's going to install something called create Vite. Next is going to ask us for a project name. And in this case, I'm going to call it front end. And that is also the reason why we, of course, renamed our original project. And now it's going to ask us what framework we want to use. And we can navigate using the arrow keys. Now I want to use React. So I'm going to select React from this list and click on enter. And now it's asking us whether we want to use React with TypeScript or React with JavaScript. And we, within JavaScript, you can see that we have the option between uh, regular JavaScript and JavaScript plus SWC, and I believe that JavaScript plus SWC is going to have something to do with React Native and building applications suitable for phones. Um, so I'm just going to select JavaScript in this instance and click enter. All right, so it has now created our front end project. You can also see that right here uh, because it's already added to our folder structure and it now states that we can uh, run CD front end, npm install, and npm run dev to make sure that it all works. So that is exactly what we will do. I'm going to CD to front end. I'm going to do npm install, which is going to install everything that is currently in our package.json. And after that's done, I'm going to run npm run dev. So the installs are now complete and I'm going to do npm run dev to start our front end server and let's inspect what we will see. All right, you can see that uh, our server is now ready. And one of the first thing that pops out is that the address on where the server is is different than what we're used to. You can see that it is on HTTP localhost 5173 opposed to localhost 3000. Okay, and we've now just clicked on the link and it has opened our V plus React project right here. And you can see that we just get a basic overview um, on our screen, including a counter that counts up to the many times you click it. And of course, we now need to make changes to this code so it can display the project code that we've already created in the previous videos. But first, let's take a look at the V plus React setup to see what are the differences that we see opposed to our previous setup. Now, the things that you will immediately notice inside of the source folder of frontend is that all of the files that are displayed here follow a JSX file format instead of a JS format. Um, because you know that in our frontend 2, if I go to the source folder on the left hand side and inside of my components, you will see that everything is a JS file, but here everything is a JSX file. Now, although those file types are different and we will need to change that to get it to work, the code inside of these files can remain exactly the same because the JavaScript that we've written in our files complies with the format that is in JSX. So no worries there. The next thing that we can also see is that the app.jsx file is completely the same as what we're used to, but in our old project, everything came together in our index.js file. Um, and there it refers to the things that we have inside of our app. But if we look at our new front end, you can see that everything comes together in a file called main.gsx. That is also a small difference uh, right here. And we need to take that into account when we want to copy the code from our index.js file. It needs to go to the main.gsx file. And for the rest, everything seems to be working very similar. So the things that we now need to do is we need to uh, make sure that all of the files from our old project are going to be inside of our new project. We need to change our app.js file and our index file 
uh, we just need to copy those codes. And all of the files that we've created need to have a JSX extension instead of a JS extension. So let's get started on that right now. So first things first, inside of our SRC um, folder, I want to have the component folder that we have created previously. So I'm going to copy components and I'm going to go over to the SRC file of our new frontend. And I'm just going to paste that in right here. And just like that, everything is in. But the little bit of the annoying thing is that we need to change these extensions from JS to JSX. So I'm just going to add an X on the end of them. And that makes sure that they are now JSX files instead of JS files. So I will get back to you once all of those files have been changed. All right, and it took me a minute, but all of the files have been renamed to the JSX extensions. Uh, next thing that we need to do is we need to copy over the code from our app.js file and put it inside of our app.jsx file. So I'm just going to copy everything from our app.js and just paste it in our app.jsx. And let's save that one right now. And of course, it's going to throw us an error because we uh, do not have all of the imports ready yet. And we're actually going to do the same thing with the index.js file. So I'm going to go over there, copy this one. And I'm going to go to the main.jsx file right there. And I'm just going to copy it underneath it. So I'm just going to delete everything inside of our main.jsx. And let's remain everything from there. And we're going to make another small change in the, our main.jsx file. Uh, because you can see that we currently have report web vitals in there because that's what we uh, got from create react app uh, But actually we don't need that for a V. So I'm going to delete the report web vitals and also remove the import from our main.jsx page Next we're going to make a small configuration uh, Change and we're going to do that in a file called vite.config.js and in here, you can see that it is already defined uh, a plugin that we're going to be using React. And an additional thing that we're going to list here is that server, and then colon, and open it. And then we're going to put port equal to 3000. And what this does is it's going to load our application on localhost 3000 instead of localhost 5173. And the reason that I do this is because in the side of our Django backend, we have whitelisted the localhost 3000. Uh, as an allowed source uh, of requests for APIs. And I do not want to change that. Uh, opposed to that, I'm just going to add this setting in our define config. And you can see on the bottom that the V server is started, and that is now available on HTTP localhost 3000. Um, and that's nice because now we don't need to change anything in our backend code. And with that done, we uh, arrive at a very important step. And that step is actually installing all of the packages that we also had in our previous uh, application. And if we go down into our package.json file of our old application, you can see in the dependencies array what the packages are that we uh, required for the development. Some of them were used during our tutorials, so, such as all of the stuff for Material UI, but also for, for Axios to make our API calls and React table to get those tables. But there are also some packages in here that specifically work for Create React App. And an example for that are the testing libraries, but also the React scripts part. And uh, if we would introduce those into our new project, we would of course end up with the same vulnerabilities and we don't want to do that. And to make sure that we only install the package that we actually need for this tutorial, I've created a notepad with the command that we need to put inside of our terminal. And I will also put this in the description of this video, so you can just copy and paste it and make sure that you have everything that you need. So I'm just going to copy this statement and paste it inside of our terminal. And hopefully this will do all of the required installs. And I will come back to you once the installs are complete. Okay, and it took a fair bit of time, but now all of the packages have been installed. Um, so I'm going to fire up our server using our new front end uh, application and our back end. And we're going to check whether everything works the way that we expect. Uh, and if everything works correctly, I'm going to then delete front end too. But let's first see whether it actually works. 
So in our front end server, we're going to specify npm run dev, which should spin up our localhost 3000. And I'm going to add an additional terminal where I'm going to spin up my backend server. And to get there, I need to cd into backend. And also, don't forget to activate your virtual environment. And we can activate that with vent slash scripts slash activate. And we can start the server with python manage.py run server. All right, so we started the server. You can see on our homepage that it does successfully get our navigation menu uh, and also all of the records from our uh, backend. So that seems to be working correctly. And we can also go to the about page and to the create page. Only thing that is very noticeable is that the um, spacing or the width of our component seems to be a little bit different than it was before. So I'm going to take a look what the reason is for that. Okay, and it turns out that in the app.css and in the index.css files, there is already some styling being applied to uh, some of the parts of the pages, which messes with the width of those pages. So I'm just going to delete everything inside of index.css. And I'm also going to delete everything from our app.css because we've already done styling in our pages. And now if I go back to our homepage, you can see that it is full width again, just the way that we expect it to be. And also if I go to our create page, you can see that everything works the way we expect. And the final step of our project is actually deleting everything inside of front end too, because we will no longer need that since everything is now successfully migrated to our new front end project using these and this will take some time but after that we will be done and that is actually all for today in this video i showed you how you can migrate your react front end from create react app what we initially used to Vite. i want to thank you very much for watching this video if you've enjoyed it please leave a like and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next video and please also in the comments below let me know what you would like me to do next Thank you very much and bye-bye.